get ready because the productivity advice I'm going to share in this video is going to fundamentally transform the way you think about how you work and when you work and why you can't be productive. I know you have had plenty of moments like this where you've done everything right. You've planned your day out ahead of time, you've got good sleep, you've been eating well, drinking water, you've even identified the most important things you need to do, you sit down to work, and you just can't, right? You cannot be productive. You can't focus, you can't think, you can't perform. In this video, I'm going to explain why that is the case, what is going on, the four different productivity cycles you need to know about in order to harness your energy and your cognitive ability and really get work done. Hi, I'm Amber with Solutions for Simplicity. If you are new to this channel, my whole mission is to help you do more and stress less. So I make weekly videos on planning, prioritizing, productivity, time management, and that elusive thing we call work-life balance. Make sure to subscribe for two new videos a week, and then let's get straight into today's topic. Now today, again, we are talking about productivity cycles, which is a concept that a lot of people maybe have heard about, but don't know the specifics on. If you have heard about this before, let me know in the comments because I'm curious what our baseline is, but I'm going to start out in really simple terms and we're going to walk through the four different productivity cycles that you not only need to know about, but hopefully will track so that you can pinpoint your peak performance windows and know what kinds of tasks you should be attempting to do when. Now, I do also wanna mention from the very beginning that there is a special free resource that I have linked for you down in the description. It's my peak performance tracker, completely free, so make sure and snag a copy before you go. The first cycle you need to know about is your circadian rhythm. Now you've probably heard of this one before and maybe you've even gone so far as to label yourself a night owl or a lark, right, an early bird. It's true that we all have this internal biological clock that determines when certain hormones are released or how much of each hormone is released throughout the day. And this is a natural clock that tends to go about 24 hours, a little bit longer in, um, men than women, but the bottom line is that it does affect how alert we feel throughout the day. We naturally feel more tired at times when melatonin is being secreted in high amounts, whereas we're able to get more done when melatonin levels are at their lowest, right, or perhaps absent. But everybody's circadian rhythm is unique. That's a really important thing to know. Your circadian rhythm is shaped by genetic and biological forces, but it's also affected by lifestyle, mood, how you think, and how you sleep. So while you may subscribe to being a night owl and you love to stay up really late and sleep in really late in the morning, or whether you are someone who likes to get up really early and then go to bed at a more early hour, there's no right or wrong way to be. The important thing is to pinpoint what your circadian rhythm tends to be like because we want to make sure that you are giving your body the chance to be as successful as possible. And clearly, if we are trying to attempt certain tasks at moments when we are not naturally alert and able to perform, then we're going to be running against that wall that we've all <laughs> encountered. Now, our circadian rhythm can be adjusted. We can work to maybe set it forward or backwards by gradually changing when we go to sleep. Scientists recommend that we don't adjust our schedule more than about 15 minutes a day so that that change occurs more slowly over time. Otherwise, we can end up in a situation like jet lag, which I'm sure you have experienced, and that's where our body is out of sync with our circadian rhythm, and we literally feel groggy and just can't think clearly, and our body is so tired, it's hard to move. It's not fun, and it's obviously not good for uh, productivity, so we don't want to just change things overnight. We can work to gradually adjust our circadian rhythm by exposing ourselves to light. Light is one of the biggest clues that a new circadian rhythm is starting. Kind of like, you know, in the old days, people would wake up with the sun and that natural sunlight would help their bodies realize that it was time to start the process of 
secreting of those hormones in their various amounts for the next 24 hours. A couple of interesting findings that the literature shows is that men tend to have a slightly longer circadian rhythm than women just by a few minutes a day, but that can sometimes lead them to feel a little more off than women. We also know that men tend to, on average, be more of a night owl type person than women who are more often likely to be an early bird. Now, the early birds seem to have an advantage in today's society because it's hard for night owls that like to stay up late and sleep really late when they have to get up early for work or school, right? But whether you adjust your circadian rhythm or not, I would argue that the very most important thing you can do for your productivity is to pinpoint your specific circadian rhythm so that you are at least aware of when you can expect your body to be able to be productive or not. And the resource that I have for you down in the description will help you do just that. Cycle number two is your ultradian rhythm. A circadian rhythm has a repeating 24 hour daily clock. The ultradian rhythm is one that repeats multiple times throughout the day. Now, typically this ultradian rhythm runs in about 90 minute increments for adults. And this is something that can, again, profoundly change your ability to be productive. Let me back up and explain more of what ultradian rhythms are. These are the little windows where your body and your brain are naturally able to focus on a task for a set period of time before natural urges and hormone secretions start to interfere with that ability to focus. Again, scientists have really pinpointed 90 minutes as the optimal time or max amount of time that you might want to try and dedicate yourself to something. And then it's very important that you allow your body time to recover before you try to hit it hard being productive again. If you don't give yourself that chance to have a break, to step aside, to breathe fresh air, or just kind of reset your ultradian rhythm, then you will find, as I mentioned in my last video, that you're actually really hurting your productivity. You are then going too far in the direction of pushing yourself, and then it's going to backfire and cause you to be unproductive for multiple hours or days or even weeks after that. Similar to what happens when you disrupt a circadian rhythm, we see the same kind of problems associated with a disruption in our ultradian rhythms. If there is an imbalance between our body trying or being forced to focus on something longer than we are naturally able to spend devoted to that task, then we are more likely to accrue physiological signs of stress. We literally can't think straight. Our mood tends to become, you know, altered. And I'm sure you have experienced this. Chime in in the comments if you've ever noticed this about yourself. Moving right along, cycle number three is your weekly cycle. Now, this isn't something that has a scientific name as far as I have been able to discover, but there is tons of scientific evidence showing that certain days of the week tend to be more productive than others. It has been found that Tuesday tends to be the most productive day of the week for most people, whereas Mondays are typically a day where if you are working a standard, maybe Monday through Friday job, we tend to kind of catch up on things we didn't get to the prior week and plan what we need to do the, the coming week, the week that we are in. Then Tuesday and Wednesday, we tend to be kind of on task getting things done with especially Tuesday being a very focused, effective day. Thursday, our productivity starts to dip. And by Friday, especially Friday afternoon, so many of us have really reached our limit. We are feeling burnt out, exhausted. We're just ready for the weekend, right? This is partly why I have previously mentioned Friday afternoons as an awesome time to consider planning out the week ahead so that you can then hit the ground running when Monday morning comes. And the weekend days tend to be either productive in terms of getting a lot of chores and activities done, or oftentimes we might need those days to really recover from a hard work week. There's no right or wrong way to be, but again, the more that you know what days you you can expect yourself to feel able and up to the task, quite literally, of complete, completing whatever's in front of you, the better. 
All right, cycle number four is your infradian rhythm. This is something that varies, right? That naturally circles around or cycles every month or so, like your menstrual cycle if you are a woman. Men might have some alternative hormonal cycles that we are still learning a lot about, but especially if you are a woman, I cannot underscore enough how important it is that you are tracking your monthly cycle because it is shown over and over again Again, to very drastically affect your energy level, your ability to focus, and ultimately whether or not you are able to get things done. This is such enlightening, life transforming information. It has made such a difference for me. And I'm curious, have you ever heard of this before? Or is this the first time you are hearing about the link between your period and your productivity? As a side note, I never in a million years thought I would be out there talking about this in public, but again, I am just a huge proponent of how these scientific findings really do enable us to take the information that we can learn and track from our own four different productivity cycles and use them to find our peak performance windows. Now, if you weren't already aware, the female menstrual cycle goes through four different phases. The first phase is known as the follicular phase. This is when our estrogen levels start to rise. We are very creative. We tend to really be open to trying new things. And so this period, this week or so, is a really awesome time for dreaming, for brainstorming, for planning, or for creating content, right? The second phase is the ovulatory or ovulation phase that tends to last about another week or so. This is where estrogen and testosterone actually reach their peak in the female menstrual cycle. It's when women tend to feel the most outgoing, the most extroverted, the most irresistible, the most magnetic. So these are great opportunities for really engaging in social interactions, deep conversations, having meetings, collaborating, doing doing group work, and anything, any kind of work that requires being social in nature. The third phase is known as the luteal phase. This is when progesterone really starts to rise and overtakes estrogen, and we ultimately tend to feel our most powerful. We are naturally more alert, more focused, more task-oriented. It's much easier for us to pay attention and to get things done. This is the window, this is the week when you want to be really working on projects where you can be detail oriented, when you can do administrative work or anything where you really need to give your best attention and effort. The fourth phase is the menstruation phase, which is when we tend to turn inward and really just be more internal, more reflective. We want time to ourselves. We might not be feeling as wonderfully as we did at other times throughout the month. Progesterone and estrogen have taken a pretty deep dive, which makes us much more tired and much more likely to just need to rest, to take time to recover and allow our bodies to do what they are doing. This is the time to to really recharge and give yourself permission not to be productive or at least not to push as hard to force yourself to be productive and get things done. All right, we have now talked about the four different cycles that you need to know because each of them affects your productivity and operates slightly different based on your unique rhythms and situation. So again, the first one was the circadian rhythm and your sleep chronotype. The second was your ultradian rhythm, which is when you are most productive during the day, right? And for how long you can be productive at once. The third was your weekly rhythm or cycle. And then for and finally was your infradian rhythm, namely your menstrual cycle if you are a woman. So the reason I want you to take all of these cycles into account is for two very, very important reasons. First, and most importantly, once you pinpoint what your personal productivity cycles are, 
you will be able to better understand why you can or cannot be productive at certain times of the day, the week, and the month, right? Meaning that you can, at a minimum, allow yourself the peace of mind to know that the reason you are struggling to be productive is very natural. It's to be expected, right? It's a physiological, biological, normal process that your body is going through. Now, the second reason this is so important is because gaining this knowledge, having the insight into how your body works and what your unique rhythms are, actually can be used to plan your projects and your attempts at being productive around when you can legitimately expect to get the most things done. So I have designed a very special resource to help you pinpoint what I call your peak performance windows. I, again, just cannot underscore enough what a difference this has made for me because I don't have time to waste. None of us do, right? Especially if you are a busy working mom like me. You have work to do. You always have things that need to get done. And so the more that you know when you can expect to get the most done versus when you are really going to be fighting it out and swimming upstream and should ultimately not expect to be that productive, the better. Using this resource will enable you to figure out what your specific peak performance windows are so that you can then take that knowledge and specifically plan in tasks for certain days of the month or the week for certain hours within the day and really give yourself that running start to being more productive than you ever thought possible, especially if you couple it with allowing yourself the downtime necessary to recharge at the times of the day where you are naturally more tired or the times of the month where you're just not gonna be feeling it, right? I am so excited for you to try this resource out for yourself and then let me know what a difference it makes for you. I really am curious, was today's talk something that took you by surprise or have you learned about this before? Have you been putting this knowledge into practice or are you gonna start now? If you have gotten great value out of this video, please give it a big thumbs up to show the YouTube algorithm that you like my content. Please consider sharing this video with someone else who needs to hear its message and then jump straight into these other videos to learn more of my top tips for maximizing our productivity and decreasing our stress. Don't forget that I make two videos a week on planning, prioritizing, productivity, time management, and that elusive thing we call work-life balance. I love connecting with you. Until next time, have a great day. Get ready, because in this video, I am going to, you know, done everything well. You've planned out your, thought a little bit about whether you would labor Just a second, baby. Now none of these conclusions, now none of these, now none of these findings are made. Physiological cycles and processes that we go through. We tend to be really good about going to bed in the end. Because men have hormones that are adjusted in different amounts. Cycle number four, productivity cycle four. The next cycle, the fourth productivity cycle that you, the fourth cycle that you have to know in terms of how. <sighs> Scientifically. Sh I or if you are, are, if you enjoy this video,